o'clock Six dark o'clock Nick. darkness. <laughs> sounds like a terrible band name. No, it sounds pretty great. Yeah, I'd watch it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jackson Cloud. Our last episode, we talked about the presence of God and how though God is omnipresent and everywhere, Biblically and experientially for most people, he does manifest more presently sometimes in certain locations. Anyways, the location in which he is present now is not Eden, not the tabernacle, not the temple. It's us! It's us! The power is yours! The Holy Spirit is in us, and therefore we have access to his presence. And this is important because if you're like me, a lot of times you kind of like treat yourself like a worm. Oh, I'm just so stupid and Wait, insignificant. What? God doesn't care about me. Wait, Hang on. why a worm? That reminds me of a Hercules like, I... quote of, we are worms. <laughs> what? That's where your brain goes That's on? That's where my brain went on that one. And Who's your two minions? Where is your... I, have a I know really what you're good referring one. to. I think it's a... It's a Christian comedian bit, I'm but right I already. cannot remember how it goes. Well, his was a Greek god bit, so please balance this out. <laughs> Listen, it was Hercules, which is a Greek god bit. I, I'm not wrong. <laughs> I mean, no, it's true, but I still, mean, it's Disney. And Roman, and Disney, and... Okay, well, um... We've sided off now so far. I don't remember what we were talking about. So thanks for watching today's episode of Jackson Cloud. <laughs> so yes, God's presence is in us now. He's in us. Uh, again, why we live in the most exciting time in history. So with, God, with God's presence living inside of us, um, this was not, it, we, we've already talked about in the Old Testament, not everybody had God's presence or the Holy Spirit or the empowerment of him. But also in the Old Testament, we talked about in our last episode, only some people were allowed to get close to where his located presence was. With a rope tied around their ankle. Uh, uh, according to legend that I have yet to verify. But yes, only only some people could go only one time a year and hope that they wouldn't die when they went in there. Hope their faces wouldn't melt off. Yes. So with God's presence uh, being inside of there, there was only one particular part of Israel that was allowed to kind of take care of God's sacred space. Anybody remember who that is? It's one of the tribes. The I don't remember, but I'm going to guess... Even though I think this is going to be wrong. You got like a 1 in 12 slash 14-ish chance. I know, which is why the fact that Aaron is coming up in my head. And Aaron was a... Priest. Well, yeah, of the tribe of... Judah? Judah? No. I don't remember. He was a, They were Levites. Hmm. The Levites were in charge of God's sacred space. So, See, uh, so I was right with Aaron as popping in my head, but yes. I couldn't... Okay, yes. Yep. And we'll actually get to why that's important right now so segue <laughs> yeah yeah I actually i forgot this was one of the main things i was going to talk about and you just reminded me Woo! because you guys derailed me so much earlier okay so it's casey's fault yeah it is my fault it's all right. my fault. okay all right so in the old testament there's a dude named melchizedek does anyone Kizitek. remember this guy does anyone remember this guy at all I've heard that name before. Nope, don't remember. You may have heard it from the story about him in the Old Testament, or you may have heard it from Hebrews, which references him, and you're just like, who on earth is this dude? Melchizedek, after Melchizedek. Abraham has gone to liberate um, some people, his... Uh, anyway, he goes to liberate Lot. And when he does that after that, there is a king slash priest who comes and blesses Abraham. Which is weird because throughout the Bible we don't have king slash priests. We have kings and priests. Now sometimes they kind of overlap like David was a king but he did a lot of things that sometimes prophets slash priests did. 
So occasionally you see these overlapping, but with Melchizedek, he is the last king slash priest at the same time. That's his job working together that we see in the Old Testament. The next guy who's going to seemingly be a king slash priest is Moses. Moses's job will be, yeah, to engage with God in his presence and speak to him on behalf of the people like a priest does. A priest's job is to engage the presence of God on behalf of others. Um, but he's also kind of a king, like he's going, he's, he never takes that title really, but he reigns over Israel or leads them. Like he's, he's kind of God, God leads Moses, Moses leads them. So he's like a main leader guy slash a priest guy, kind of. But Moses doesn't want the job. He doesn't want to be like the king slash priest Melchizedek, the last one that we heard about. Moses doesn't want to speak. <laughs> he, he doesn't want to he doesn't want to like lead people and so he tells god like no no i i, I don't speak I, I stutter don't don't make this my job <laughs> and god's like no i need you to do this He's like yeah no i don't want to do that like actually if you really read like very intently moses's character and the early interactions with god moses was super against doing everything God wanted him to do. <laughs> like, like right. to a to a very, it's not Prince of Egypt, like, oh God, I will serve you. It's more like, <laughs> nope. no God, I, I'm not gonna do that. Like over and over again with Moses at the beginning, right? Um, and so he rejects being a king slash priest and God makes a concession. That wasn't his intent to ever have Aaron be involved. But because Moses refuses <laughs> to do what God calls him to do over and over again, God's finally like, rather than just ditch Moses and say, forget it. What God does is, all right, Aaron, he, he speaks well. I will split the task between you two. It was meant for you, but I'm going to split it. And within that splitting, we no longer have a king slash priest role. We now are, uh, we're seeing it divided and it will stay divided throughout the Old Testament where kings, it's not all that shocking how horrible they, how horrible of a job they do at following God. It's because they don't care about being priests anymore. <laughs> they don't care about following God. They're just like wealth, power, this is all mine. And they don't listen to the prophets. They kill the prophets. They shut up the prophets. And so like all the priest roles are cut off from many of the kings and, and they don't care about it. And so when Jesus comes along, we finally see restoration of the king slash priest role. He shows up. He is king of the whole universe. But he's also the one who has God's presence on him. And after he dies and is resurrected and asks God to send us the Holy Spirit, we get the Holy Spirit. And whereas in the Old Testament, only the Levites, only those whom the priest role was divvied up to, only they could get to the presence of God on somewhat rare occasions. In the New Testament, Christians become a royal priesthood royal <laughs> the bible calls us a royal priesthood in other words we now every christian with the holy spirit in us we have taken on a kingly or queenly type of authority and also have access to the divine presence of god so it's not like it was in the old testament anymore things have changed we have in many ways seen the line or the role of Melchizedek restored in our society. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, when we're talking about God's presence and like, oh, I feel like a worm, like he's not going to talk to me. He's not going to let me anywhere near close to him. First off, he's as close as your skin because as a Christian, he lives in you because you are a temple of God. But secondly, like the Bible doesn't treat you like you're a little thing. You, you are kings and queens you have authority you not only carry royalty in your veins as a child of god but you also carry 
access to the presence because you are a priest of, of God as well. So like in pop culture, the only thing I can think of that references this would be in Narnia, where the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve immediately become the kings and queens of Narnia um, because of their lineage, but also because they have access to Aslan. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to remember because, yeah, I mean, all analogies aren't perfect. They didn't see Aslan all the time. Right. But they were hungry for Aslan, and they wanted to... And they saw him occasionally. Yeah, except, of course, for poor... I forgot her name. It's like my favorite fiction of all time. Not Lucy. What's the other girl's Susan? name? Susan? Susan. 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 Also, I mean, Eustace saw him like once, but... Yeah, but Eustace repented and came around, whereas Susan, in the end, got too into her beauty and pride and left Aslan. <laughs> anyway, so moving Spoiler on... Spoiler alert if you haven't read the last book, but you're also decades behind. Would you like to analogize anything? No, I'm still trying to figure out the song I was trying to think of. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's. I haven't heard a word you said, so no, I would not like. To. <laughs> hey, at least I. At least it was a somewhat good analogy. I stole it, so you know. Anyways, uh, if you were to just fast forward to this part for the point of today's episode, you are a royal priesthood. You have authority, and you also have access to God's divine presence. So, live like it. You're a superhero. It's like the end of every episode now. <laughs> the uh, royal heat priesthood. You when you're sleeping. Whoa! You my head hurts. We're too close to Christmas. <laughs>